previously on Brookside. Should we call her? When are you doing your next? Oh, she'll have ages yet. First sign is facial tics. Do you know Greg is the only man I've ever slept with? Are you sure? Can I help you? Time to golden and a large scotch, mate. I'll have the scotch first and all. That's bad for you, you know. You don't say. Not that this stuff is much better. Ah, that's your own mate. She always gets such a warm welcome in here. All his laughing boy just in a good mood. Do you mind? I've only ever been in here once, that was years ago. Doesn't look like it's changed much though. Did I change the beer mat last summer? Oh very nice. Couple of years and you won't be able to do that in here. Or any pub for that matter. Really? Yeah. Los Angeles is banned smoking. And New York. Dublin's next. Pubs, restaurants, the lot. A couple of years. And the whole country will follow. I'd like to see them try. It'll happen no matter what anyone says. Not before time either. I used to smoke myself. Only now and again, mind you, mostly when I've had a few. Can't stand it now, though. Well, they do say the deck smokers are the worst. Probably something to do with seeing a bit of ourselves in you lot. Knowing that we used to cause all that misery. Or jealousy, because you'd all love to secretly smoke again, but you can't because of all the pressure, the disapproval. Maybe, but I won't start again, I'm telling you now. <laughs> Working in a pub put me off for life. Yeah. Breathing in other people's smoke all night long. My eyes stinging, my club are stinking. It's all part of the job. Shouldn't have to be, though. You work at a chip shop. You smell the chips. Listen, mate, I are, and I'll tell you something now. Cooking oil fumes never killed anyone. But my smoke does. <laughs> the facts are there, lad. Well, facts can say anything you want them to say. I mean, one report will say passive smoking is dangerous. The next one says it isn't. Because it was probably funded by the tobacco companies. Just as the anti-smoking groups fund their own too. Listen, there's no arguing with hospital wards full of smokers. We all know that it kills us. It tells us in big letters every time we reach for that pack. But whether we kill anyone else is yet to be proved. Conclusively, anyway. Uh, 12,000 a year, I read somewhere. So that's nothing compared to the hundred odd thousand a year of you lot who smoke yourselves into an early grave. And save the government millions in unpaid pensions. Add to that all the billions we hand over in taxes. And even if we do take up hospital beds, it still works out that we end up paying for everyone else's medical care. So we should all be grateful, should we? No, you should just stop banging on about how much this filthy habit costs the nation. Listen, it's not just about money, then. It's about people's lives. Twelve thousand of them. None of them smokers, and they all die horrible, agonising deaths because of the selfish few. But look, every time you smoke one of those, you only take in 15%. Everyone else in the room has to share the rest. You know, all those chemical compounds, you know, nearly 4,000 of them, all dangerous. You're very knowledgeable about all this, aren't you? Yeah, well, I'd like to know what I'm talking about. Marvellous thing, the internet. Bad for you, those computers. Another one, please, Peter. I mean, you're not the only one who likes to know what he's talking about. I mean, Lord knows I had my fair share of run-ins with smoke-free, self-righteous, including the ex-wife. Oh, well, there you go. 
There's something we do agree on. Ex-wives are a health risk. Worse than these. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> so these chemicals that I'm polluting your airspace with, it's a lot worse than this, you know, coming fast and thick at you every day. <laughs> well, maybe there is. But you lot blow some nasty stuff our way and all, you know. I mean, formaldehyde, benzene, carbon monoxide. <laughs> You want to see what comes out of a gas fire or a space heater? Yes, but every pub up and down the country is not filled with space heaters, is it? All right, all right. So you spend a night in a nice new mobile home. You'll be breathing in all kinds of chemicals, huh? I mean, I've never seen anyone trying to outlaw a caravan just because of what it's made of. Yeah, well, they should be banned and all. The buck on the boats. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'll drink to that. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. And when you're at the petrol pump, filling up for your little caravan holiday, the stuff that you breathed in is the same as sitting next to me smoking a thousand of these. And don't even get me started on what your car spews out in a day as it's driving along. It'd take me 20 years of smoking to give out the carbon dioxide that your car produces in one day. I reckon I'm not the only one with a computer. I get all my info from good old-fashioned books. All well, right. So you think you've got all the answers, do you? No, I just like to be clued up when people are going to have a pop at me. I'm impressed, yeah. You know what you're talking about. But no matter what you're saying, no matter what facts you come up with, you know in your heart that you can't really defend smoking. Oh, yes, yes, I can. And I will. Because, you see, the point that you kind of sanctimonious, clean-air Nazis always miss is that smoking is about choice. So if I choose to enjoy smoking, there's nothing that you can do about it. Do you know something? These things must be the only product that kill when they're used properly. And I won't even start with the houses and the businesses that burn down and the people that die when they aren't used properly. They don't cause as many fires as chip pans. So is the chip going to join the caravan and the barbecue on your verboten list? Huh? The thing is, I don't want to ban them, you know. I mean, just so long as you don't do it where other people have got to suffer the consequences, that's all. Yeah. Including the outdoors. You are kidding. No, I'm not kidding. I don't want to be in the park with my little lad downwind of your smoke, thanks very much. Mm. I'm sure you've already banned us from libraries, cinemas, public transport, well, restaurants, bars, the great outdoors next. Too right. Look, you make yourselves out to be some sort of persecuted minority, but the simple fact is, you're not banned or barred from anywhere. It's your dirty, disgusting, dangerous habit that's banned. You, you're more than welcome. Yes, well, thanks, but we are a partnership. All right. Me and my shadow, eh? Only one day that shadow's going to be on your lungs. Yeah. You don't believe in mincing your words, do you? I tell it like it is, Joe. I was out. Has being so candid ever got you into trouble? <gasps> Not all. And my life has been nothing but trouble. Well, let's see. No. Don't be so nosy. Oh, very classy. But that costs a fortune. Nothing wrong with splashing out on myself. I work hard enough. Are you sure these are for you? Of course they are. And all these new clothes. I never get the chance to go shopping in Brussels because I'm always too busy and too tired. You sure you're not trying to impress us hating somebody? Don't talk soft. Well, there's nothing wrong with wanting to look your best for Jimmy. Not just for him, you know. Oh, really? Well, I reckon these are. <laughs> and I reckon he's dead lucky as well. <laughs> well. It's a while since I've had a few. Nearly two years. Have you been on a wagon? Mm -hmm. I had to jack it in. Didn't agree with my medication. Medication? Yeah. I, uh, I lost the plot for a bit. Well, you certainly seem okay now. Mm -hmm. Got myself sorted out, you know. Yeah. Got all my problems dealt with. And I'm feeling great now, yeah, back to my old self. Hey, these are going down well, aren't they? Ah, uh, you'll be lighting up next. Mm. Yeah. Never. I'll tell you what, you criticise the smokers, but this stuff, now this is a real class act. The taxes on drinking, they go nowhere near to pay for the effect it has. Crime, policing, medical care, and just look at all the misery it causes. Well, most people are social drinkers, aren't they? Hey, they don't bother anyone. You know, apart from boring the sober. <laughs> it's still a greater burden on the taxpayer. Well, whatever the problems are with drinking, right, it's socially acceptable, yeah? Yeah, and the people don't inflict their byproduct on their fellow drinkers, do they? Hey, hey? I mean, you never see a drinker yeah. pissing all over everyone, do you? Hey? Oh, yes, you do. 
Oh, OK, I'll give you that one. <laughs> Have you heard anything about the trial this morning? Yep. I spoke to me to list the first thing. He said it's dragging on. Defence are getting desperate. I'm trying everything possible. <laughs> the way? No. It's the waste of the time. Making the things worse themselves. Yeah. Let's hope they put them away where they can't terrorise normal, decent people. Yeah. For as long as possible. I'm not sure if this is me. Go, sister! No, I'm not wasting waste you much. There's nothing wrong with wanting to look your best for Jamie. You try it on. If it fits, you can have it. Get lost, no way. That must have cost you the bomb. I'll treat me to all, so can't I? Besides, it's not me. It's more you. I don't know what I was thinking of. Miles too small. See you soon tonight. We haven't arranged anything, but he said he'd call. Hey, you want to go and take you somewhere really nice? So you can show off all your new clothes? Not interested in going on, really. Well, why don't you go and take you for a nice meal? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. Oh, oh that looks gorgeous on you. Really suits you. Thanks. I can't believe how well things are going for you, you know, Mum. <laughs> you know, I can't get my head around it being Jimmy Corker. What about you? I've told you I'm fine about it. And things are obviously getting very serious. Possibly. Definitely. I've never seen like this about any of the fellas that you've been out with. But all the fellas in Brussels, they were just dates. I mean, they were nice enough, you know, good company. They were all very sure of themselves, but you know, Jimmy, he's so vulnerable. It's one of the things that really attracted me to him in the first place. And he's funny, and he's caring, and he's got principles, and he sticks up for himself and what he believes in. Sounds exactly like someone else that I know. Haven't you ever wanted to pack it? Oh, yes, I tried a long time ago, but it's not easy. A lot of people manage it. And a lot of people go through misery, failing. <laughs> well, maybe they don't really want to quit. Of course they do. It's the worst kind of addiction. You've heard of all those, it's harder to quit than heroin comparisons? <laughs> yeah, I have, and I'd argue it. Yeah, uh, you see, smoking, it takes over people's lives. Yeah, I'm sure it does. But at the end of the day, they've only got themselves to blame, haven't they? Hey? I mean, I don't buy into this smokers are victims too line. Do you know what I mean? Even 40 years ago, people knew it was bad for them. But since then, you'd have to be stupid not to realise the dangers. Oh, young and naive, you can't expect kids to make an informed decision on whether or not to take that first cigarette. They're too busy trying to look old, uh, cool. Makes them look neither. It's all part of growing up, Jim. You either stop or you carry on and you hope for life. Poor little lambs. You don't strike me as the reactionary type, Jimmy. Well, no. Usually. But some things get to you. Look, I know what nicotine is. I know that what the big tobacco companies have done to people is evil. But when it comes down to it, no matter how hard it is to stop smoking, you know, it's down to the individual, isn't it? I mean, if you want to stop, you stop. It's as simple as that. Yeah, but you never lived through it. I've lived through a lot worse, mate, I'm telling you. Look, I'm not one for prejudging people. But you know what goes through my mind? You know what I think when I see that someone smokes? I think, yes, you are weak, you. You're weak because you need cigarettes. But what about people like me who, you know, just enjoy smoking? Hey, do you mind? My God, no wonder they call it passive smoking. Because us lot just keep quiet. Yeah, I don't want to upset anyone. It doesn't matter that they're making our lives a misery. Or killing us, even. Yeah, all right, Jimmy, come on, you know, take it easy. Hey, what? Do you really think I want you blowing your smoke in my face any more than your mate does? Ah! Hey, hey, what's going on? Yeah, not very ah! nice, is it? Get out of it! Yeah, my yeah, ale's not going to warm, it's not going to give a cancer or I beat it. Sorry about this, oh, just had a few. That's all. All right, right Jimmy, come on. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. I always wondered how you'd handle me meeting someone else. I was worried in case you'd be uncomfortable with it. No, I knew it was bound to happen one day. I didn't. I was scared of getting hurt again. Which is one of the reasons I want to take it slowly with Jimmy. Jimmy would never do anything to hurt you. Oh, no, but you never know what'll happen. Didn't think your dad would hurt me and look how wrong I was there. But you shouldn't be scared to commit just because of what's gone on in the past. But me and your dad were together a long time. And we had a family. But you can't live the rest of your life not trusting people just because of his weaknesses. You shouldn't shut yourself off forever, Mum. It's the right money. Think I've had enough? 
Please stop it. Uh, don't let me stop you. Might as well while you can. As long as you don't start spitting your orange juice at me. No, no, I'm okay now. Uh, fancy a game? Yeah. Ah, if you want. Red. Listen, sorry about um, losing it like that before. Uh, I've always been a bit hot-headed. Ah. Why do you do it anyway? I mean, um, it's like you're committing suicide and you're okay about it. Like when I used to smoke, I thought it was okay, you know, something to do. I'll do worth dying for. Well, you see, non-smokers, they don't really appreciate the pleasure we get from it. You know, it's the whole experience, the routine, the reassurance of having that packet and a lighter in your hand, the cigarette between your fingers, and initiated, they just don't get it. How could they? It's like some kind of crutch. Something to do with your hands. Hmm? Something to uh, keep yourself occupied. Well, yeah, there is an element of that in it, but uh, then there's a taste. The smell of a newly lit one. The relaxing indulgence. It's like meditation. How about the ones you need just to feel human? Or the early morning one you have, you know? To stop the coughing. Well, yeah, but then you get that special one. You can't beat it. Like after a meal, with the first pint after work, it's like heaven. You'd be saying next that they're actually good for you. Well, in some ways, you know, they are. I mean, I can honestly say that if I've got a hectic day of work, if I manage to pop out for a quick fag, I come back totally refreshed. Well, it still doesn't make sense to me why people still do it when they know they're risking their life. But... People will always do things that are bad for them, Jimmy. I bet if cigarettes were fattening, there wouldn't be so many women smoking. <laughs> You're probably right there. You know the thing that gets me? When parents smoke in front of their kids, I mean, what's all that about? You know, putting yourself in danger is one thing. You know, putting your children at risk. Everyone used to smoke in my family, my dad, my mom. I remember the brown stains on the living room ceiling above where they all used to sit. Thought of it still knocks me sick. An overflowing ashtray is as disgusting to me as it is to you. Yeah, but you still fill them, don't you? Yeah, but seeing drunks sick on the street doesn't put me off drinking. No matter how much you try to explain, I'll never understand why you keep doing it. One thing you can't argue about, smokers are better company. How'd you work that one out? They live life to the pool. Easy going, more carefree, just a better laugh. You're just romanticising now. Well, yeah, but I reckon there's some truth in it. I mean, you gave me a dinner table full of smokers over an uptight gang of miserable non-smokers any time. I mean, you know, drinking and talking over a smoke afterwards, it's the best part of the meal. Well, maybe you'd enjoy your food better, you know, if your taste buds weren't so bad. You know what I mean? Helps to keep their weight off. You ask anyone who's managed to pack it in. Oh, and so millions won't stop because they'll put on a few pounds. <laughs> Meanwhile, you lot carry on smoking yourselves to death, taking a few of us with you. Ah, congratulations. You're the winner. No, Joe. I'm a loser. Always will be. Even when it looks like I'm odds on, you know, something always comes up. Like this morning. You know, my future couldn't be brighter. For the first time, I had a future to look forward to. That's all gone. You've been a bit harsh on yourself, aren't you, Jim? No, believe me. No matter how good things are, eventually something always goes wrong. Always. You're off your meds, Jim? No. You never said what your job was, did you, Joe? I'm a consultant. I had a hospital around the corner. Perfect. A fanatical pro-smoking doctor. You're supposed to tell everyone not to smoke, hypocrite. I tell people what I have to. It doesn't mean to say I have to follow that advice myself. So you sit in places like this, spewing out your smoke for everyone else to breathe in. Not all that again. I was in your Aussie. 
this morning. I haven't um, been feeling too well for a few months, you know. I went to see my doc, you know, and uh, told him about my shortness of breath, the nausea, dizziness every now and then. That's why I ended up in your place. All very nice they were, you know, examined me, a few x-rays. They found shadows on my lungs. Yeah, that's right. I'm one of the unlucky few. Looks like I've got lung cancer. Um, I'm really sorry. A few years smoking the odd Siggy didn't help, but I reckon the reason why I could suddenly be on a death sentence is cause of selfish, self-centered dickheads like you. I breathed in all that smoke for years. The smoke you don't reckon harms anyone. Bit late for that now, isn't it, Joe? Yeah. I'd really like to wish you all a slow, agonizing death. But what's the use? You're already inflicting that on yourselves. <laughs> How annoying is that, eh? I can't even have the satisfaction of cursing smokers. Yeah, you've done a lot worse to yourselves than I could ever wish on yous. Jim, I think you should talk to someone. A counsellor? No thanks. I've had enough of counsellors to last me a lifetime. If you've got this, then you can beat it. To be honest with you, Joe, mate, I don't think I want to take any medical advice off you. You've already owned up to lying to your patients. I'm never anything but totally honest with my patients. Then you've never been honest with yourself. How can you be? You treat people, you try to make them better, and then you light up and put other people in danger. I mean, do you need to take some sort of an oath to be a hypocrite like that? I know, you don't want to hear any platitudes. So the thing is, lately, when everything's suddenly been going right for me, yeah, well, I couldn't enjoy it. Instead of just getting on with life, all I was thinking was it can't last. It won't. Didn't know why or what it could be. But it looks like it was right. I told you, it's probably up and out first thing with a gardener job on. And you never called last night either. Oh, will you stop worrying? The flight leaves at six o'clock. He doesn't even know I've booked him on it. It's probably best that he doesn't find out till last minute anyway. Give him less time to start panicking about flying. I still don't think he'll come. Of course he will. A romantic holiday abroad with you. <laughs> Hey, Jimmy. Looks like next door isn't going to be empty for much longer. Yeah. What happened to you? No. Oh, don't tell me. You bumped into something. Something like that. Come off it. You've been boxing, haven't you? What's that all about? It was an accident. If you say so. So, what do you reckon this is all about, then? Well, they're obviously having some work done before they move in. Look like they're putting bollards in or something. Well, it looks ornamental to me. Mm, stay for that. I'm sure they are, right? I mean, I know it's supposed to be stressful moving house, but I think it's even worse getting new neighbours. You don't know who you're going to end up with, do you? 
I mean, it's all right for them. They've got no worries. They've got us. But who are we going to get? Well, we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? Have you seen them at all? No. Or have you heard anything about them? No. OK, Jimmy. What's wrong with you this morning? I'm sorry. I just need to see Margie. Oh, I heard the rumours that you two were going strong. Is it true, then? Yeah. Hey, are you going to bring Margie to the wedding? Uh, yeah, that'll be great. I suppose I should get used to that reaction. Ah, oh, no, people think I'm mad. You know, with the age difference and everything, but... Well, it doesn't matter, does it? I mean, I know by the time I'm his age, I'll be nursing him, but I don't care. Really? You're willing to make that sacrifice? Yeah, you know, for better or for worse and all that. Well, what about his heart? I mean, isn't there a risk of more problems? Possibly, but I love him. You can't waste your life worrying about ifs and maybes, can you? You've, you've just got to go for it. I suppose you're right. Is everything all right, Jimmy? Listen, I'll see you. And I'm... I'm really pleased for you, honestly. Hope you have a long and happy life together. Get in here, you. You've got my mother worried sick. What? Take no nooses. I was just a bit worried about you, that's all. What happened to your face? Oh, just, um, in a world of me, I walked into a cupboard door. Looks really sore. Divvy. My mum's got a surprise for you. Well, go on, tell her. Well, I'm not sure. She's booked you both on a flight to Brussels tonight. Nikki! Six o'clock. I've got some guidebooks as well. I'll go and dig them out. You can read up all about it on the way. It's only for a few nights. The flights were dead cheap. All right. I don't want to pressurise you into going or anything. No, I, um... You don't want to, do you? No, it's just... You should have asked you first. Margie, it's really kind of you. So you do want to go? Yeah, of course. Well, you don't really have to come if you don't want to. Look, it's a nice surprise, it is. Uh, I... Are you OK? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just a bit nervous. <laughs> There's no need to be. I came to talk to you about something, only, um... wanted us to be alone. Oh, I can uh, ask our Nicky to go home, so you want. That's OK, I can wait. She's going to town later anyway. Right, well, um... I can call back later, you know, no sweat. Jimmy, is there something else? Yeah. I really care about you, Margie. I know, yeah. I just wanted to make sure you knew. We've known each other a long time, Jimmy Corkill. There's a black cloud hanging over your head. It's nothing, all right. Then you won't mind telling me then, will you? Hey? Problem shared and all that. Come in then. Oh. You're missing him. It's the picture you took of us in that restaurant in Hardman Street. I've sent me a few more over. Another two years in Brussels. <laughs> thinking about what Jimmy said before. What? Well, two things, really. He wants to talk to me alone and that he's nervous. What's he got to be nervous about? You don't think he was going to pop the question or something to you? Well, maybe. Or that he's about to dump me. No, no way. He's head over heels. Do you really think he might propose? <laughs> you know how impulsive Jimmy is. be just the type of thing he'd do. He did seem really edgy. Oh, my God. Manage. I know we've joked about it, but it's a massive step. What am I going to do? 
We've only been seeing each other five minutes. He obviously thinks it's long enough. Maybe we've got it all wrong. And what if it haven't? Will he be back later? I need to know what to say. If I turn him down, oh, he'll be devastated. But what are you going to say? I don't know. It's all so sudden. It's your decision. But if he does ask you, you're going to have to give him an answer. One way or another. I mean, I'm obviously no blushing bride. You know, white wedding material, but I'd still like a nice day. Something a bit special. Defo not just back to ours for a few cans after the register office. I've already got my eye on the outfit. Mm. And a lovely matching paid boy suit for Josh. I was going to put him in a kilt. You know, the, uh, the McLaughlin tartan, if there is such a thing. But I reckon he'd spend half the ceremony mooning at everyone. <laughs> hey, and then there's the debate on who to invite. I mean, they're all going to want Dee Dee there, aren't they? But I don't want that witch there looking down her nose at me. Well, I mean, hopefully she wouldn't come, but uh, no one heard. She'd do anything to put a downer on me, big day. Anyway, enough about all of that. You gonna tell me then? There's nothing to tell. Well, you and Margie, things aren't going so well all of a sudden. It couldn't be better. She's booked a flight for me to go back with her. What, to live? Just for a few days. Do you think she's um, sounding you out, you know, to see if you want to live up there with her? Maybe, I don't know. And would you? I haven't really given it much thought. I would jump at the chance of moving abroad. Me and Rolla love those moving abroad programmes, you know. Oh, could you imagine the real Casa Beveron in Spain? Or, uh, or Maison Dixon in France? <laughs> I could just see her settling in that province, you know. I don't want to miss our wills growing up. I don't see enough of him now. I see even less of him if I moved abroad. Things moving a bit too fast for you, yeah. I really like her. I feel so right between us. I haven't felt like this for a long time. But? It's nothing to do with Margie. Or the way things are between us. It's me. Well, what about you? Do you feel like you're not good enough for her or something? No. Because she's got some fancy job abroad. She's worked hard to get where she is. She's got a really good career. Being with me could ruin it all. What, just because you're not some high-flying businessman? No. <sighs> Look, Jimmy, she's with you because of who you are, not what you are. I know. So why are you letting all this get you down? It's more complicated. Look, you've got a history, right? Margie knows about that. You haven't kept anything from her, have you? Not about my past, no. So is he health? It is, isn't it? Look, Jimmy, you've got an illness, right? It's the same as any other illness. Now, as long as you keep taking your medication and keeping your condition under control, everything will be fine. Margie knows the score, doesn't she? Hey, she wouldn't be here if she couldn't handle it. I know. You need to start believing in yourself and in Margie, especially if you're going to make a go of things. What's that? Hey, nothing, just something Jimmy gave me. I want to say I'm sorry. What for? The way I reacted before to Jimmy proposing it just came as a bit of a shock. Well, maybe I've got it totally wrong. Well, if you haven't, and he does ask you, I think you should say yes. Really? I never said you two being together was fine by me, but the thought of you actually getting married scared me a bit. But I've thought about it, and I reckon it makes complete sense. Probably it's a bit too soon, like, <laughs> but why should you hang around? It's obvious. You made for each other. <laughs> Thanks, babe. So, what are you going to say if he asks you? Well, I've been sitting here trying to think of reasons why I should say no, and I can't think of any. Not real reasons. And then I started reading this. What is it? It's a little poem that Jimmy wrote for me. A love letter. <laughs> really? No one's ever written anything like it for me before. He's poured his heart and his soul into it. I mean, how can you go wrong with a man like that? I can't. 
So the answer has to be yes. <laughs> Always here if you need me, you know. Sympathetic here and all that. Thanks. Mm. Well, I don't know what your problem is. I think you've got everything going for you. I know. So why the heavy heart? You need to lighten up. Yeah, and I'm just on a bit of a downer. I mean, we all get them, don't we? Well, not when you're in love. Look, this is the exciting bit, isn't it? Hey, getting to know each other, and you can't take your hands off each other, and you're sharing your dreams, your secrets. Do you reckon? Well, for you, Margie, yeah. At least me and Ron have got the excuse that it's the second lap for us. And there's not much left that we don't know about each other. Saying that, though, Deco's hands as busy as ever. Not to mention his other bits. Yeah, no need to go into detail, eh? Well, you know where I am if you need me. Thanks, Pat. You're welcome. No, Amina? Hey, you want to stop worrying about things? You and Margie deserve every bit of happiness. You want to enjoy it? Maybe it's time for me to think about coming out. Really? Well, I've enjoyed living in Belgium, but I've been there long enough. The reason I went over there in the first place was to get over what happened, so maybe I can come back now and start, well, start a new life here. It'd be so good to have you back. It'd be good to be back with you again. He's going to be here soon. I best make myself scared. Listen, good luck. <laughs> I am going to look stupid when all this comes to nothing. For all I know, maybe about to ask me to lend him some money or... To tell me that a snore. No, it's something big, I know. Come on. <laughs> yeah, just put that over there and then give us answer to this. Well, who knows what's going on there? Eh? Maybe some religious sector bought it and they turned it into a temple. As if. But there's been a cult before, eh? No, Katie Rogers joined it. Yeah? Oh no, I don't think this is anything like that. Maybe the new neighbours, they just yeah, like statues. Who knows what kind of people Max and Jackie have sold their house to, but I'm telling you one thing, all they will have been interested in is getting the best price. They wouldn't care about me and Ron, and who we've got to live next door to. Well, maybe the statues are a good sign, though. Yes, How do you work that out? Well, whoever the people are moving in, they obviously want to spend money on doing the house up. Oh, never thought about it like that. Well, I just have to do some people. Hey, are you, congratulations are in order. You and Miss Dixon getting married. I know, yeah. In a few <laughs> weeks, I am going to be Mrs. Dixon. Oh, Mrs. McLaughlin Dixon. I'm sad, did you? Don't you think the double barrel might be a bit of a mouthful, though? I suppose so. Hey, do you think your mum will ever be uh, Mrs. Shadwick Corker one day? Oh, who knows? Go on. No, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not. Do you remember Jimmy, isn't it? And the beans. Well, we think he's going to propose. <gasps> Jimmy Corkill, the sly old dog. I, I saw him this morning, didn't say anything. Well, he seemed as edgy and nervous. He did, actually, yeah. He was playing his cards very close to his chest. See, he must be about to propose. Yeah. And is she going to say yeah? Yeah. And he's even talking about moving back here. Oh, I am made up. Jimmy Corkill, eh? What a dog. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of food, and if you fancy some lunch, and there's some really nice wine in it as well. I'm fine, thanks. Right, you've got me all to yourself, Arnie. He's gone out. Yeah, that's all right. So, what is it you want to talk about? God. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. <laughs> well, spit it out, then. I love you, Margie. I want you to know that. Well, I guess that. The way things have been going and the poem. Yeah, well, the thing is, I've got to end it. I'm sorry. It's over. What? It's the only way. You might not understand that now, but you will in the future. Over? End it? <laughs> you are joking me. It's for the best, Margie. You've got to believe me. It isn't about you. It's me. I don't believe it. You're now quoting cliches on me. I don't know how else to tell you. You can tell me why, for a start. You've just got to accept that what I'm doing is for the best. I haven't got to accept anything. I deserve an explanation. You don't want to be stuck with me, honestly. Well, shouldn't that be my choice? Go back to your life in Brussels, Margie. Just...
forget what happened between us. So, what was all this about? It was a mistake. I wish we hadn't started it. Oh, thanks very much. But from where I was, you seemed happy enough at the time. I was. But you've got to trust me. This is the right decision for both of us. Trust you? After this? How can I trust anyone ever again? You'll understand in time, I swear. Oh, I understand now. You have made a total fool out of me. Don't think that, Margie. Out. I'm so sorry. Get out, now! Look, I know you're angry, but I never set out to hurt you. Yeah, well, you failed. And see this? It was all lies. No. My heart is yours. I dream about you while I'm awake. Our futures and time forever. All lies! No, I meant every word, I swear. Lying! Get out! Just get out! Mom? I don't want it to end like this. What would you expect? A friendly handshake? A kiss? What's happened? He has dumped me. I had no choice. What? It's for the best. What are you going at? So, what was all this about, Arnie? Oh, no. You couldn't have her, so you went for the next best thing, your mother. Don't, Margie. Well, it's obvious that way you get to be near her. No. What's up? Couldn't you keep up the pretense? No. It wasn't like that, honestly. You couldn't be more wrong. Oh, it's that fool for you and all your lies. give you a reason? No, not really. Not a proper one. He just said how sorry he was. I might understand why in the future. What did he mean by that? Who knows? He even said it wasn't me. It was him. It's the oldest cliche in the book. I just don't understand it. Oh, he's a man. What does this understand? Selfish lying gets. I mean, they think they want relationships and commitment, but they don't. They just run away as soon as there's a chance of either. But Jimmy, oh, I've made a total fool of myself. I knew before it starts I'd be mad to get involved with him, but I just, I just got swept away with it all. Are you gonna be okay, <laughs> Mum? I will be when I get away from him. I'm so sorry. You no, know, it's me who should be sorry. I should have known better. I put you through all that, and now I'm running away again. Mum, are you sure you don't want me to come with you to the airport? No, thanks. I wish you'd come back with me. If only for a few days. Thanks, but honestly. <sighs> don't look a wreck. My eyes still bloodshot. A little bit, yeah. What do you want? Uh, I just need you to know how sorry I am. Did you do anything I'm sorry about? That I ever let you anywhere near me. You haven't even given me a proper explanation. There isn't one. You know what you are, Jimmy Cork? You're a coward. A selfish, lying coward. And I don't want you going anywhere near here. Do you hear me? You stay away. Come on, Mum. You miss your plane. Why, Jimmy? Why'd you have to do that to her? I hate you for what you've done. Do you hear me? I hate you. Margie, I don't even know if I should send you this, but I need to say goodbye to you properly. 
What happened today was the hardest and most painful thing I've ever had to do. But hurting you like that has got to be better than what you'd have to go through if we stayed together. I couldn't do that to you. So hard as it seems right now, I'd rather break your heart than force you to watch me suffering. At least this way you can get on with your life. You hating me is the price I'll have to pay. I love you. Are you Nick me? Wasn't expecting to see you again. No, I bet you ain't. But why should I sit over there getting angrier and angrier while you're sat over here laughing your heads off at us? I'm not. But you didn't lose any sleep last night, did you? I didn't sleep at all, actually. Well, I bet it wasn't because you were worrying about my mother. To be honest, Nicky, I was. And you. Yeah? Well, I hope it's because you're feeling guilty. I feel terrible about what happened. I'm feeling really low at the moment. Oh, you're low, all right. You're the lowest person I have ever come across. In fact, you're not even a person. People have feelings. You're just a selfish get. Nicky. My mum was going to come and live here, back on the coast. Yeah. She really thought there might have been a chance for you and me. But not now. No. Not now. Jimmy Cork has gone and cocked everything up again. Nicky, I know how you feel, but believe me, I only did it with your mum's welfare in mind. Oh, right. That's original, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Let me think. When was the last time that you said that? Who was it you said it to? That's right, it was me, wasn't it? How could I forget? Nicky, I did that for you as well. That's right, yeah, you did. Just after you'd slept with me, then you'd bin me off. Then, surprise, surprise, you go and do exactly the same after sleeping with me, Mum. They were two different issues. No, they were all about your issues. What you wanted, what you needed. Self, self, self. Do you know, they should write a book about you, Jimmy. And devote one of the chapters to what you're best at. Screwing around. Then they can have another chapter. Jimmy, the letdown merchant. Come off it, Nicky. You know I'm not like that. Aren't you? We've had this argument before. Remember Tim and Kenny? As soon as you were on the back foot, you blew Tim up to me. Do you think he feels like you've let him down as well? OK, OK. You were really devious, if I remember. I wasn't being devious. Oh, you were. And you still are. All for one and one for all, eh? Except it stops, in your case, at the all for one. Look, I haven't meant to hurt anyone. But you have. And you still are. As long as Jimmy Corkle's OK, as long as he's all right in this strange little world, sod everybody else. Do you know, when you get into this strange world of yours, you drag other people into it. People get carried along by all your strange moods and ideas. Yeah, but I haven't forced Oh, anybody. no, I know that. You didn't force me mother into thinking you wanted to marry her. Do what? Yeah. 
She had this notion, actually we both did, that you were going to ask her to marry you. And I can't for the life of me figure out why, but she was going to say yes. She's bottling it. Becky, I didn't realise. Well, you wouldn't, would you? You can't see further than the end of that nose on your face. But aren't I glad now? Because who knows what you're really like, eh? Who knows what goes on in that crazy, strange, twisted mind of yours? Oh, I'll tell you something else. Mate, you want to keep that in your kex, along with your carnal, loony thoughts in your head. Because I want nothing more to do with you. Cry on someone else's shoulder next time you're on one. Nikki. I've said all I want to say. Look, I know you're upset. Go home, Jimmy. I told you to feel terrible about what's happened. Sir? Nikki, will you just... Get off me! Will you just give us a minute? <laughs> Nick. Do one, Jimmy. Look, I didn't know about you... What's your problem, mate? There was no need for that. And uh, an apology wouldn't go amiss. Fuck off. Oh. I might go and introduce myself and get into a satellite dish install. Give me a chance to move in. Strike while the iron's hot, my old man used to say. You just moved in, mate. Well, I'm Sean, and that's me better half over there, Ruth. Better? Well, just to let you know, if you need any telly gear, you know, aerials, dishes, that type of thing, then I'm your man. Not interested. I'm glad we're moving. That's the kind of neighbours that are moving in. Hey, Brookside Close here. Have you got that delivery yet? Late afternoon? I don't think so, mate. I'm not waiting here all day. I want it pronto. about your mum. Well, it's too late now anyway, isn't it? I'm really sorry, Nicky. Yeah? I'm sorry too. I just wanted to tell you. Well, you've told me now, haven't you? Nicky, please. Try. Any chance of you apologising to me mother, then? Yeah, I promise you that will. I just need a bit of space, that's oh, all. Oh, yeah, why not? Let us suffer, eh? A few more days. I realise you think I'm a bit of a lad and that I don't care less, but I promise you that I do. Oh, yeah? Oh, you're so believable. It's just that something's come up. It's something personal. Oh, it's something personal now, is it, yeah? Something that you don't need me for. Look, I've got to get on. Go on, then. Get on. Don't you be worrying about me, Jimmy, or worry about anybody else, for that matter. It's not that I don't need you. It's something that I feel is better staying with me. You full of crap. Do you know that? Oh, you'd open up to people when you need them. Get them into your crazy little world. You see, you know, everyone thinks you're this big, I don't know, born-again nutter. Even I thought that sometimes, but now, I don't know, I just, I don't know. What do you mean? Well, think about it. Me, me mum, Tim, Helen. We were all here for you. Well, you knackered us all up in the end, didn't you? No. Makes you wonder why Jackie left you, why your Lindsay got off. Maybe because they know what you like, know what you really like, know what you're capable of. Sucking people in. Once you've tasted and enjoyed what they've got to give, you spit them back out again. No, no, you don't understand. Don't you walk away from me. Oh, that's your answer, isn't it, eh, to everything? Walk away. Get a little bit of space between you and your problems. And then breeze back in. Hopefully everyone's going to feel sorry for you. Listen! I've appreciated everything anybody's ever done for me. You're all true friends. Oh, right. What are you going to do when all these so-called true friends are gone, eh? 
What do you mean by that? Oh, we'd all find out a few home truths about you, aren't we? <coughs> do you want to know something? You know, when we've all got off, we've all found happiness elsewhere. I know you're still going to be sat here on your own, reflecting. I know, you're going to die a very lonely man. Stop it, Nicky, stop it! Why? Do you like to hear the truth? Oh, it doesn't bear thinking about, does it? No friends or family there to mourn you when you go. <coughs> oh, I've got your answer this. It's smash the place up. Great! Let's all have a go, shall we, eh? There's bound to be some soft soil. You'll come round here and clean it up for poor old Jimmy. Please, Nicky. I'm too tired to argue. I'm not well. No, I know you're not well. Hands off the living phone, will you? Leave it. No? Hello? Who is he? Oh. Hang on. It's a Mr Grey from Liverpool General. Your consultant. What's wrong? What? Um, could you give us a minute? Uh, it's, it's a bit private. Can I come out now? Well, what was all that about? I've just had the best news in my life. You wouldn't think so. Can you give us a moment while I get my head into gear? What, do you want me to go back in there, do you? No. So come on, then. I thought I had cancer. Lung cancer. And you haven't? No. So why aren't you dancing around the room, then? Any normal person would once he found out that they were okay. <sighs> I'm not okay. But you just said to me that you... I've got something else. What? Something to do with asbestos. It causes chronic bronchitis. That's a cold, isn't it? <sighs> Worse than a cold. More like damage to your lungs. Asbestos inhalation. I am at a complete loss. I came over here to give you the telling off, and now I'm feeling sorry for you. I think an explanation's in order, don't you? Look, I want it here in ten minutes. I mean, they never actually told me it was the big C, but then, you know, they never told me that it wasn't. So you just surmise it, don't you? I mean, they couldn't afford to rule it out. Oh, I started having all sorts of horrible thoughts and... Felt like crying in the hospital. But you did. So, I see, that's why the consultant rang me at home, you know. He could see how worried I was. Probably because of your medication. He was worried about you losing it again, going off on one. Yeah. He's a nice fella. <laughs> Can we get for your sick to oh, the stomach? Oh, <laughs> We're calling you for all kinds of men. Come on. It's not your fault. I was just in a temper over me, Mum. I know, I don't blame you. I didn't mean all those things I said to you. I forced you into that temper. I'm to blame. I just wished you would have said something. Didn't want you to know. It's that word isn't it? cancer, it frightens everyone. Did you go wrong, didn't I? It couldn't be helped. He just didn't want to scare me. Or me mum. Or your mum. That's why I broke up with her. I just thought, why should she have to carry this burden around with her? Well, it's not a burden anymore, is it, Jim? It is, Nick. But you're not dying. Well, there is that, but it's still something I've got to come to terms with. But you've come to terms with everything else. You're in control of things now. Yeah. I'm stable, I don't go mental or anything, but... this lung thing... it can only get worse. It might develop into asbestosis or something. But you don't know that. Well, yeah, that's the problem, isn't it? I don't know what will happen. Well, they should be able to control things. Maybe so. But I feel that this little... Nicky, it's tiny. A little bit of asbestos stuck in me long. It's like a ticking time bomb, waiting to emerge and blow up one day. We've just got to hope that it doesn't then, don't we? Yeah. I 
think me mum's got a right to know, Jimmy. She must never know. You've got to tell her. I can't. I don't want to hurt her anymore. No, I know that now, but how will I hurt her? If we did tell her, would you come back over? I know she will. That's exactly why I broke up and don't want her to find out. But why? But why should she have to go through countless hospital visits, sitting with me while I get tests and x-rays every couple of months? Because that's how it'll be. Nikki, the pain she's going through now will fade in time. We've all loved and lost, but as we know, we all get over it eventually. It will be better for your mum, you know. I think it should be a decision. It's not. It's mine. I'm not letting her go through it. She doesn't deserve it, Nick. She's already had to deal with losing your dad and two kids. So now, whatever you say, I'm adamant. She must never find out. You're late. You should have been here first thing this morning. Yeah, well, I only do what I'm told, mate, all right? Take it round the back. I only deliver. I said, take it round the back. Have you got a problem with that? Do you know what he asked me? Who? Yeah. The consultant. He wanted to know if I've been in contact with any form of asbestos. And have you? Yeah. I said, when I was working on the docks, Mr Gray. When did you work there? I didn't. What? You just said that... Yeah, but I wasn't going to tell him the sort of work I was doing there, was I? Well, why not? Because I was robbing the place. <gasps> Getting all the scrap copper me and a couple of mates could get into the back of the van. Go away. What's asbestos got to do with them? Copper pipes and things? Well, they were wrapped in asbestos slag and weren't they? You know, I mean, you could only saw or hack the flame and stuff off. It was like there was dust everywhere. You couldn't see sometimes it was that thick. Do you know, you go about your daily business, right, innocently, not harming anyone, and then suddenly, 20 years later, bam. You suffer the consequences. Um, I wouldn't say it was entirely innocent, Jimmy. It was in my eyes. Look, if we hadn't got the stuff, someone else would have. It was big business in those days, you know, years ago, selling scrap metal before all this plastic stuff came in. I remember that night, me and the lads, you know, dodging in and out of the security guys. Yeah, all bevied. It's a drunk. Yeah, we'd had the skin full. Must be the right racket with all those pipes. And I nearly got caught before we'd even started. I wish they had it on now. Yeah, only I'd realised then. Yeah, you were a thousand others. Makes you think about things, doesn't it? Like what? That cynical plant they want to build. That'll be spewing out all kinds. And here's us lot, innocently sitting here, waiting. But there's bound to be government procedures set up, guidelines that they have to follow. Yeah, you're probably right, Nick. But don't forget, they probably had procedures when they were wrapping those pipes in asbestos lagging. How many people have died from asbestosis? Three sad, I suppose. I'm telling you. We'll all be breathing the muck that'll be getting pumped out. And in 20 years' time, we'll have all sorts of infections and diseases. You mark my words. Oh, wait, Jimmy, don't be saying things like that. It's true. And do you think I want our wills coming over, staying the weekend, and breathing all that rubbish in? Do you really think it'll be that bad? Worse than bad. I'll tell you something. I'm not having it. What are you going to do? I've got plans. All I need to do is to get them focused and then I'll be setting them in motion. Well, I'll help you. Uh, no, you won't. Nicky, you've got your own life to live. Why don't you just sell off and move out? <laughs> no. This is my house. This close is my life. I'm not moving anywhere. It's that wood burning plant that will be moving. I'll tell you something, Nicky. Whether I live to be a hundred years old or whether this thing inside me kills me within the year, there's going to be people out there who'll remember Jimmy Corkill. <laughs> Good lads. Don't be taking any crap. I'll get back to you. Look at the mess. Yeah, sorry, mate. See, I'll keep your hair on. Oh! Ah! 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 You'll pay for that, Tossie. Oh. 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 Now, beat it! Aye, aye, mate. What's all that about? Didn't I tell you to do one earlier? 
What's going on, mate? Sean, leave it. It's okay. Please, come in, Jimmy. This isn't right, you know. I said, beat it! Ah. Hey, there's no need for that. Sean, don't. It doesn't matter. Look, just leave it, eh? I'd do what the slapper says if I were you. Just leave it. A few years ago, I'd have had a go there. But I've realised it's no good fighting the whole world the whole time. I'm glad about that. Yeah, well, from now on, I'm going to concentrate on just one fight at a time. I've got bigger fish to fry than some Jack the Lad neighbour. And besides, I've already had one run in this week. That caught? Yeah, some fella clocked me one. What happened? So I was sounding off to some doctor in a pub, right, about the pedals of smoking. Did he agree with you? He was a smoker. Oh, it's no joy then. So, you know, I gave him my version, he gave me his, and we parted OK. Even after he's done that to you? It wasn't him. It was some other fellow that was having a go at in the bark. He was the smoker. It was him that flattened me. Mind you, I was bevied at the time. Jimmy, you know you're not supposed to drink. Nicky, I couldn't really care less. I needed a drink. I'll come with you. You know, when you go for your tests and everything. No, you won't. You're just a slip of a girl. You're not coming through all this with me again. You've been to hell and back with me, and I'll always be grateful to you, Nicky. But the book stops now, here with me. But you're going to need someone. I've got the doctors, haven't I? You know, I've got the nurses at the hospital. You know, all fine people. Got our Lindsay. What's she had to say about it all? I haven't told her yet. Well, don't you think you should? Well, she's on holiday, isn't she, with a new boyfriend? And you know what it's like trying to phone mobiles abroad? Well, you could have sent her a text. <laughs> and said what? Hi, Lindsay. I've got cancer. Have a nice time. Well, you haven't got cancer now, have you? Well, it's a good job I didn't get in touch. Otherwise, she'd have been worried sick. She still will be. Yeah, well, don't worry. She'll adapt. We both will. I mean, I've had enough bad doers, haven't I? Our little Jimmy dying. The drugs. The mental illness. But I've always come back. You're a trooper, Jimmy. A fighter, that's why. I know. I've always known it. That's why I'm determined to deal with this cynical rubbish and this latest illness head on. And I'll tell you something now, Nicky. I am going to beat both of them. Not sitting around waiting for Father Time to come in and ruin things for me. I've got a lot to do before he catches up with me. But I'd still like and to... And I'll tell you something now, Nicky. I am going to do it on my own. <sighs> on my own. On your own? Uh, no, um, my sister's upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, by the time we get back, lose the attitude, all right? If the wrath of corporate enterprise wields its power against me, I'll meet it as hard as I can. And we'll be with that action on the close a little bit earlier next week, 11.45. Next tonight, Evan should be called the Good Samaritan as things kick off down under with a double from the secret life of us. <laughs>